everybody, it's Romania Black, and it's been a while. <laughs> But uh, in my time since um, catching up with the novel For Heaven Official's Blessing and starting Scum Villain's Self-Saving System, uh, during this time, episodes six and seven of the audio drama have been fully translated by Treasure Chest subs and put out there to review. And so I originally was going to do just episode six. And then when they dropped episode seven, uh, Reiki over on Patreon was like, there's enough content to talk about with the revision changes for episode six and seven that you could watch them together and I was like that's what I'm gonna do so we're gonna get an hour of audio drama which is super exciting because it's heaven officials blessing and I don't know when episode eight's gonna come out but we need to we need to talk about this one we're in the desert we're back to volume one content which is so weird I'm super excited about it and with these two episodes, we'll also have at the very end a little bit of Reiki and Anime Annie have compiled together translations of the revision notes to make for these two episodes and the chapters that they are based on. So that's really, really cool. Um, as it stands, you have to be a member of Treasure Chest Subs to be able to download the audio dramas and watch along with me, unfortunately. Um, you'll be able to see the subtitles, though, uh, in the video, but I can't do audio because that's against their copyright. I do have to make it transparent because that's part of their policy and I'm going to respect them. So um, they don't just accept people into their discord to see them. There have to be a, a subscriber invite listed out. But if you're on the discord on my Patreon and you're in the scum villain or the heaven officials blessings channel, then I'll probably send out like a little thing of treasure chest has a sub joining thing out I'll send it out there and it happens every so often but those of you that have it will be able to see um, all this in real time as well so but I've had people request that I do the audio drama and so I wanted to do it so I woke up this morning was like you know what let's just dive in I've been waiting I've got back from my trip I'm super excited to finally be able to do this and let's just go to from there so we're not going to waste any time uh diving in I want to get into this and see what all we get so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to make sure I get the right ear but yes we are going to dive into a uh, heaven officials blessing episode six it's been so long it's been months since I've watched heaven officials blessings audio drama and the series itself I'm having a little withdrawal <laughs> so we're going to do that here in three two one and let's dive in. Oh yeah, the snake showed up. Yeah. It's just a snake, guys. Why is everybody yelling? Yeah. Oh, they're venomous. Oh. Okay, so like 23 centimeters away. Ooh. I like that they have to describe it because it's an audio drama. And if you're just getting into this, imagine reading the, not reading the books or watching the Dongwa, and this is how you got acquainted with the series. That's such a wild concept. A scorpion tailed snake. That's terrifying. Hate it. Uh huh. Oh. Mm-hmm. You can't see the picture probably at this point, but there's the, the picture that's for this episode is just of San Long and Shi Lian shuffling along and there's uh, Fu Yao and Nan Yang behind them. Didn't it look like a wristband? Oh, because Hua Chong loves to get decorated, right? Hua Chong likes to get fashionable. Don't play with it. Of course you would. Just toss it aside. She lands like, I don't want to see it anymore. Oh, shit. The moment she land was like, I'm done with it. He's like, bye. Oh, more powerful than the snake. Absolutely. Hmm. She could control them. Oh. There won't just be one. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. I forgot about Nanfeng using the fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about that. <gasps> but they're going to encounter one outside, correct? Yes. I just love they got the same narrator to come back from Modao Zushi to go into this. Yes, the same narrator. It's amazing. Uh huh. Well, because you paid your respects. Yikes. Oh, and he got bit by the snake. He got stung by the snake. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's so terrifying, right? That's so scary. Ooh, Azao's voice. Ooh. I like she it's like it's not that scary or eat this pill. Oh, is it just a placebo? Ah. Oh my god. I love that they're like, oh shit, there is no hope. And I like that he's like, oh, th no, no, there is. Oh, Tian Shang, yeah. Mmm. Mmm, what does that mean? That means they have to go into the city to get the flower, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Switching tails. I forgot that that's how this happened. Mm. From a ghost king far, far away. Oh. So, was it Huachong or was it Bai Wusheng? I feel like it was Hua Chong that did that because they were like, screw them. The leaf is the antidote. Wow, because of her kindness. Yeah, that seems like a Hua Chong thing. Yeah, that the fern, the Shan Yu fern is the one that's going to cure the, yeah. Well, there is some truth even in lies. Oh, I love his voice. Oh, I love his voice. I just want to listen to it all day. I'm like, read me a menu, sir. Well, that's the problem. Oh. I gotta go huddle with the boys. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Right, they fall into that trap and go there. It's to lure them in to get rid of them. Uh. Well, crap. I like Fuya. I was like, I'm the bearer of bad news, but. Hmm. I forgot about the Ghost King creating the scorpion snakes. Oh my god! That's so mean! Who would pray to you in this desert? Look at Shelian. 
Wake up already. Oh. Oh my god, that's so mean. What a bitch. Shillian's like, I'm here. I'm not just going to do nothing. Oh. 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 Oh my god. They're like, we can't go anywhere. How are we going to handle this scene? Oh. No, he's not scared. He's like, I created these scorpion snakes and they attacked him. Shut up. Shut up, Fuyao. <laughs> he's like, hi, his little laugh. He's like, oh, geez, just, just, wait. oh just, just get Rudy out of the way. What are we doing? Hmm. Ah, uh, but never lets other people touch them. Hmm. But it seems close with you. I like that Nan Fong does it. Yes, yes. It's him that does it to help out. Hearing this. What are you looking at this for? Like, what? Were you enjoying it or something? Shillian's like, I couldn't really help it. I just had to save him. Oh, shut up, Shillian. Quit talking about how you'd get hurt. Not really. I'm just used to it. Oh. Oh. Oh, is he a swallower? Oh. Oh, spit it out, yeah. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Get, leave him there. Even with his fever. I don't remember Sheely and getting a fever in the original, so that might be an addition. But we'll borrow Ajao. You stay here, Fuyao. That way you can't bitch at us while we're gone. <laughs> He's just like, fine. Mm-hmm. Like a heart. Of course it's shaped like a heart. Hmm. Yeah, we really need you to come along. Fine. Also, Shelian's way of sussing him out. I was going to say, did he kill the snake? Uh, 
Yes. Nice. You said Shilin got hurt. He just didn't want Shilin to get hurt. And he was sad that it happened and that Shilin was so okay with it. Well, it's not that you did something to offend him, but you being totally okay with getting bitten, he's not happy with that because his whole goal is to protect you. You let yourself get hurt and you didn't care. Ugh, my heart. Are we going to go straight to the fortress to meet the, the face in the ground? I feel like that's going to happen this episode, maybe. Possibly. The fallen ruins. Oh, but they have to um, encounter the two women first, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's only roughly 10,000 people, which is not a huge place. I mean, I live near a, a city that's kind of like 10,000 people. But yeah. Yeah, they were like a nation with um, like Kamo and all them. Over six foot eight. Yeah, okay. Yep, they were huge. I just know a few things. I'm like, Hua Chong, I read a book and was here at the time. The place they held criminals. Oh, are they going to see? Well, they threw them down. That I do not know. Ooh. But I really want to know. I like Hua Chong's like, don't get any ideas. They just threw people in. Yes. So most of them did not live. You really know about all these things. I like how he says that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Those two whispering in secrets. Nanfang is very pragmatic. Who are quite cute. Oh, how creepy, right? Oh, I love that Shilian's like, when people call them cruel and harmful, Shilian's like, actually, they're kind of cute. I'm like, Shilian has maybe a kink towards people that are, <laughs> mm. like the lady in black, mm, whatever. Uh. Oh my God, I love it. <gasps> Their relationship's rather close, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Meh, move aside. I love it. I was just like, fine. Nice, Nanfang. Okay. You alive? You alive, bro? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, you haven't, huh? Hmm. 
Funny that. Like the royal palace. If I were looking for a flower that the queen had found, I would look at the royal palace too. Good work, Sherlock. Good deduction skills. Hmm. Like the little shuffling of the feet. Right. Yep. Split, split up, gang. Is he going to fight Tian Shang? Did he end up fun coming? I think I remember that. Uh. Yeah, there we go. I was like, okay. Oh no. What's up, kid? Oh. Oh, sweetheart, this is not Modao Zushi. You're fine. Hmm. Oh. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, why'd y'all come? Well, uh, the the Fu Yao guy scared us off. I like the Fu Yao didn't even stop them. Fu Yao was like, whatever. This is ridiculous. Oh my god, no. Uh about that. Ah! Oh my god, and she leans like just I could just see him being like, "Oh my god." The camels were blown away by the sandstorm is insane. <laughs> the sighing, just like, uh Yeah, don't put your lives at risk just for money. Oh. Like get to hold hands and play with that. That's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. He didn't want him to go over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Human fertilizer. I love that they're called human fertilizer. Oh, my God. I love that's their name in this. Oh my God, that's so creepy. Is this a face in the ground? Come on, like you haven't seen anything crazy? I like that they're like, how is that not a big deal? Yes. Oh my God, Shillian. Who doesn't have a face? I like they use like a little vocal fry for it. Oh my God. 
Yikes. Like, they're so honorific there. Uh... Hmm. Ah. So gross. Yeah, that's the messed up part. MXTX is like, how can I make this creepier? Here we go. Ah. Uh. I like that Shelian didn't want to use it because he didn't want to use something that had used humans to create. Ah. Oh. That is not wrong. Oh my god. Oh my god, come closer, come closer. I'd be like, nope, no thank you. I'd rather not. Think we're good. But he's gonna recognize uh, Zhao, right? Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love he's whispering it. He's like, you can't get scared now. Oh my God, yes. It fits together so much better now that I've read the novel. Like all this makes so much more sense now. It's like, yes. Yeah. And at first I thought it was Hua Chong, but that's the misdirect. They want you to think it's Hua Chong. Oh my God. She lands like, actually, no, let's not get closer to it. Let's back up. Let's back the far away. Uh huh. You're the one who's scary. I like she lands like, it's your face. Yeah, no. Oh. Yeah, no. What are you doing? No. Oh, my God. Gross. Ew! Ah! Oh my god! I like that it's too early to be afraid. Like, you're only in volume one, bitch. You ain't even gotten to the rest of the story. Oh my god! And this is Camo, right? Or maybe it's not Camo. Maybe it's just one of the generals. And then I can't remember if we see Camo in the pit yet or not. Oh, and they stop there. Is that it? Well, we have episode seven. So we're going to pause this just for a hot second.
and go back to do episode seven because we've got that, which I'm pretty excited about. So we're going to start episode seven here in three, two, one. Let's pick up right where we left off. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about them eating you. I like Shelian's like, let me speak to the manager. Let me go. And you're holding the sword wrong. Oh, I love this picture of Hua Chong holding Shelian, by the way. Uh-huh. But also, oh, are we going to get the carrying scene in this? Are we going to get that? Oh. Oh. Yeah, come on. Oof. Oh my god. Oh, that sound of him coming out of the ground! Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. So gross. Uh-huh. Mm. Oh my god, that's all just longer than an average person, sure. Yeah, right. Oh. People. Oh, Ho Chong, oh my God. Oh my God, that's so scary. I forgot how freaky this whole scene is. A little bit thin, oh my God. Oh, the sound effects in this episode are so grisly already. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, we are getting to the pit. Oh, my God. I forgot how quickly this moves. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The prisoner's pit. <laughs> oh, like Cheryl's just like, I don't know. <laughs> He's so unbothered by the fact they could die. Yeah. Come on. Hmm. I like they have to tell us his height just because we're listening, like, because they can see that. Mm. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, the pit. Shillian's like, I don't want them to, I don't want them to throw us in. Yeah. Right. Mm. 
Oh, I like Shillian keeps his calm during this scene. Oh. my god don't scare them so long he's like as you wish wow how princess bride of him oh oh my god yeah, that would be terrifying, not being able to see the bottom. Yeah, I'd be like, nope, no thank you. I'm good. We're good. Mm. Oh, is that Bonyu? so creepy but she's a ghost so she can just get out of it uh. mm. yeah that is so awful to think that they would do that to bon Yu and that's how she became a ghost Ooh. Oh man, you can hear you can hear like the sword. Yes. You can hear the souls of the guards. Oh no. I'm coming, don't worry. Oh, Shelian, Shelian. He's like, build me that shrine. I'll need that. Oh, he's like, yeah, it'd be great if you build a shrine. Nobody's done that for me in years. But I have good news and bad news. Oh. I'm going to catch all of you. Oh, oh my God. And that connecting to the idea of the bridge and saving everyone and I'll be able to save all of you. Oh, oh yeah. A Zhao gets thrown down first. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. A Chu A Zhao. It's okay. I think Shelian's like, nah, it's too, too, too suspicious. Oh. Yeah. Throw me in first. Oh. Oh. Come on, Shelian. Uh. Oh, now we're not going to let you go down. No. Oh. Oh, who me? Who me, this devastatingly handsome man who's going to go down first? What? Hmm. Walk me down. In the words of Mariah Carey, walk me down. Oh, he just smiles and smirks with that little huff. Oh, my God. Oh, that scream. Oh. He's like, I'm going down there. Like, Shelian just immediately goes. Oh. 
Oh my god. Yes! Oh my god! But it's blocked by the array. Yep. Oh. Oh. He was going to let himself get smashed. By touching their body. Oh my God. Is it a chest, Chilean? Is it a chest? Or are you just happy to see him? A throat. Oh, bitch, you know it's a throat. You're feeling him up, Chilean. Are you sure your voice got deeper and sexier just now? I wish I could see you. Well, if there's nothing, you can put me down. Why are you being so awkward? Because there's a hot man holding you. I don't know how to spell the word awkward anymore. Oh. Yeah, why is it so quiet? Well, because Watchon killed them all. That damn ASMR breathing, let me tell you. I like the Aojiao the whole time is like in the background, like, what is this business? What is this? Why do I have to watch this? Oh. Oh. Oh, I loved, I loved him just dancing around Kamo during this. That was so good. With the little tinkling. You should know, Shelian. Come on. I love Rui in the drawing around Shelian's hand with the butterfly. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, yeah, get a ming in this. Come on. I like as I was like, mm. He's like, oh, you're not in the way. <laughs> oh, I should hold on to him more tightly or I could fall. What a, that's great logic, Sheely, and of course. It's dirty. Yeah, I was waiting for that line. Are you going to carry me bridal style while you fight a general? What? I mean, that's romantic and hot, but what? Ah. Uh. Fight's over. Shillian's like, I know you want to be bad cop, but I got to question him first. Hmm. Did, did you kill them all, Son Long? Seems a little, um, much for a human.
There we go. Say it. I like that he just murdered all these people, but Shelian's like, hey, about you killing all these people. Yeah, about you killing all these people. Be more careful. <laughs> yeah. He already knows he's watching at this point. Then, like, so close. <gasps> the least well disguised ghost I've ever seen. Ah! Mm-hmm. So why? <gasps> because it's you. Ah! Yes, I don't care about their social status. That's right, Shelian. Yes. I'll dislike you even if you're the emperor themselves. Yeah! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh, so good! So good! Hell yeah, he does. Because you love him, you bonka! You baka! Yes! Could you, could you put me down? I, I, was, I was like, get on with it! Shut up. I thought it was going to be like, I thought that we were going to get smoochies. ridiculousness yeah let me show my sincerity oh and this one we can see like the pit is just filled with bodies the ground is dirty. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Yeah. Hmm. Is it now? Oh look, the moon is out, Gege. So romantic. Quit flirting, you two! Come on, I was like, damn it, I can't. All oh, the gayness, I can't take it. Come at me, bro! I killed them, let's be clear. Ooh. Mmm, you're all the same. What traitor? What's he saying? Mmm. She then's like, wait a minute. Yeah.
Yeah. Who else could it be? Uh huh. And he doesn't know. I remember. I remember getting this part, being like, "Wait, what? <laughs> we don't know them." That part was such a gag. I was like, oh my god, wait, we don't even know who they are? Oh my god. Yeah. Well, yes. About that. Nothing to say to that. <laughs> yes. Why don't we work together against the common enemy? Against Yongin. Mm. Why would she do something like that? This story and MXTX's writing prove you'll do a lot for Dick. Hmm. Yep. Ah, uh, the ghost lives on. Yep, so they can't get out. Ah. Uh. Well. She leans like, so we had a big misunderstanding, so. <laughs> He's like, oh, I was a little bit, uh, misunderstanding of some things. Yep, that all makes sense. Uh-huh. Not all. There's nothing left. Ah. Uh. Correct. Correct. Right. I mean, yep, that's not a bad assumption. Yeah. Oh, I love how that was phrased. It has to be the Banyu. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, 17 years old, that's the age that Shilian was when he became uh, a heavenly official. Wow, the comparison. I felt like, well, he did get taller. I, that's so fascinating that Banyu is the same age that he was. This is my friend. Oh. <gasps> because. An aura of misfortune. He's like, oh, really? Am I that transparent? Oh, huh, you know. A menacing creature. Well, Chang's like, say it to my face. He's not a menacing creature. Oh. He's like, he's quite cute, actually. 
Are you still my friend regardless of what he is? You're quite nice. I like this furthers the headcanon that Hua Chong is actually a demonic monster and Shilin's the only one who finds him attractive. Everybody else is like, that's a menacing creature. And he's like, what? No, this is just my friend. Yeah, but funny how that works. Oh, fancy you showing up. Oh my God, Fu Yao, now you decide to come? Well, oh my God. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, Shillian's like, I've been so used to all the bad smells, I didn't really think about it. Oh. Oh, nothing. We're good. We're totally fine. Yeah, I felt he was taller, but now he, he went back to being so long. I was like, do I have to come down there? Oh my God. Like he just decides on his own. He's like, forget it. I'm coming down. Yeah, that was careless of you, Fuyo. Oh my God. This is the Goshia Banyu. But where's the show? Oh. Yeah, we can't have you beating up a little girl. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Are they going to end it there? Right when he gets down there? Oh, they're going to end it right there. I thought we would at least reveal Ajao before we ended it. Oh, are you joking? Oh, man. Oh, I do want to get to the, uh, the end of the song, though. I'm going to skip ahead. Sorry. It's not that I don't like the song. It's just it's like five minutes long. And I want to get to the preview. <laughs> so we'll just listen to the end of it, right? We're at the, like, 31-minute mark, if you need to catch up. It's such a good song, though. I maybe shouldn't have skipped over it, but I really love the previews for the audio drama. So I'm like, I want to see the previews and see what they are. And we've got like a decent, a decent minute long one. Ooh. Ooh, come on, minute long preview. Come on, minute long preview. What you going to give us? Come on. Oh, it's going to be the flashback. He's like, you really want me answering that question? Ah! Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, ha. Huh. 
How about that, huh? How about that? I'm going to kick this out. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's so, uh, it is so weird going back. And at this point I tried not to, in the audio drama, do any spoilers because I know some people watching maybe have not read the whole novel, but from here on in with the rest of the discussion, um, I am going to talk about novel spoilers because I've read the whole novel series now. Um, so just if you don't want any of that, there will be novel spoilers in this audio drama discussion. But, um, y yeah, so it's so crazy going back to volume one because like scenes like this, when you get to see them all over again in hindsight and see like why Hua Chong gets so mad about the scorpion snakes, why he gets so mad that Shilian gets bit because he wanted to protect him. And he's like, you, I couldn't protect you from getting bitten. And that's kind of my whole point of becoming a ghost king to do this. Uh, also the idea I'm pretty sure it is Hua Chong, the ghost king that allows the scorpion and the snake to merge together to get vengeance. That all makes sense because even though Hua Chong loves Shi Lian, he really doesn't care about anybody else. So one of Hua Chong's things that I think gets kind of overlooked later on in the story is that Hua Chong is kind of very neutral and very gray and really doesn't care if the stuff he does ends up affecting the heavenly officials or the mortal realm. He really only cares about Shi Lian. And I think that as time goes on and he's with Shilian more, he softens up a bit. But at the beginning, Shilian kind of just overlooks. He's like, oh, he's cute and fine. But he was really doing some stuff that was like, oh, no, that's kind of crazy. Um, even though we find out him sacrificing his eye to create Yi Ming and the circumstances around that, right? But I just, I love the head canon that, the, I love the head canon that Hua Chong is actually terrifying and horrific to look at. But Shilian's the only one that thinks he's cute. So when Ban Yu's like, there's a menacing monster beside you. And Shilian's like, what, who, him? He's just my friend. It's like, I love all the fan art where they draw Hua Chong looking terrifying. And then you have Shilian being like, it's okay. It's all right. That part's all super cute. So yeah. Also, I was trying so hard during the audio drama reaction to say Fu Yao and Nan Fong, but oh my God, Fu Yao, AKA Mu Ching. What a bitch. Just like, oh, they had a death wish. Who cares? I love how consistently MXTX makes his character. He is the same from start to finish. There is no inconsistencies with Mu Ching. He develops, especially in the last act, but up until that last act, he is very consistent. And now in hindsight, I'm like, oh my God, it's so obvious that Nan Fong and Fu Yao are function and Mu Ching. It's so obvious. But at the time I didn't think MXTX was gonna do something like that. So, or that it was even possible in the story. So MXTX really skirts that boundary of making you realize I can do whatever I want in this story, which has me excited uh, to get into Scum Villain with that concept. So yeah, I have up here pulled up uh, a set of notes and additions from episodes six and seven that Reiki and Anime Annie have put together. So thank you both. I appreciate that. Um, inside the cave, there is some added dialogue that's in gray. So an added dialogue as um, Shilian's hand, as he talks about uh, being normal sea snakes, so as a drop of cold sweat slid down Shilian's forehead, so long the snake looks highly poisonous, be careful not to get bitten. He's like, don't worry, I'm pressing into its heart. If it bites me, I'll crush it. His tone was kind as if saying, I'll pat it. And he's like, stop playing with it. And he's like, I think it's the snake who should feel like it's in danger. I like functions like, I wouldn't worry about the snake. And Sun Long smiles and says, since Gege said the animal's quite rare, I wanted to look, use this opportunity to take a closer look. Do you want to take a closer look? And he's like, no, you should toss it aside. I like the song Long is trying to like casually flirt with Shilian with the snake. And Shilian's like, I don't want that. Okay. So um, they put down in the Banyu arc, the scorpion tailed snake backstory has changed. I was like, I don't remember that. It says in the original version, the scorpion demon and the snake demon were forced to mate and were ridiculed. I was like, that's the difference. Because when they said they were forced to exchange tails, I'm like, is that like a metaphor? But no, they've changed the story. In the new version, they were tortured to death and they sought help of a ghost king to merge their bodies and seek revenge, thus creating scorpion-tailed snakes. Now, it doesn't say here whether that ghost king is Hua Chong. I assume that it is, but it could also be Bai Wusheng. Bai Wusheng could have been the one to do it as well. Bai Wusheng would also make sense because it would be, Bai Wusheng would be like, oh yeah, go get revenge on the humans, sure, and cause chaos. So I think it could be either way. I think that since they don't specify if it's Hua Chong or Bai Wusheng that turned them into the scorpion snakes, then 
I think it could be either one. I could see Hua Chong doing it because of indifference and Bai Wusheng being like, yes, let's cause some more chaos. But I love that. I love that MXTX took like this forced sexual encounter and was like, mm, no, I don't like that. Let's just do that they were tortured and then they sought revenge. I like that better. See, that's an author going back and realizing that, yeah, that may not have played off so well. So let's just change that. Snaps MXTX. I love it. So then we have uh, Hua Chong swallowing the venom. And I was like, in the Donghua, he spits it out. And I couldn't remember in the novel if he originally spits it out. Um, here, Hua Chong is a swallower. And I'm like, ha ha. It says, um, so I tried something now. It's too close to Banyu. We can't set up the spiritual communication array. And he's like, this place possesses some intense demonic energy. We can't send any messages out and we can't leave either, which is from the snakes and from Wachong. And he's like, I don't understand. Just look at this harrowing place. Would any sane person send prayers to you from here? I Yeah, with this part here where Mooching was like, like, who would send you prayers in the desert? And I'm like, and Shulian's like, well, if someone really is on the brink of the death and needs saving, I, I, I wouldn't want to just leave him behind. Yeah, and then... Mu Ching is like, wake up already. If he's really dying, he'll pray to his majesty first, Jun Wu, then to the, the other gods, and finally he'll pray to you if he remembers you. Like, Mu Ching is really harsh there, even though it says he's saying it in a polite tone. And I like that Feng Shen kind of calls him out, being like, hey, shut up, leave him alone. And Xilian's like, again, I wonder at this point if Xilian figured out who they really were. And he's like, well, even if that's really the case, then the one who sent the prayer would suffer an even worse fate. So in the end, I'm the only one who came. Let's just cooperate and go together. And so then, yeah, I like that Xilin, you know, he, I like that Hua Chong offers his hand and I like this added part here where functions like, why are you acting shy? You know, while he's sucking the poison out of your hand, he's like, it's not like you're a girl or anything. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. And Xilin's like, I'm not embarrassed, but he's just like kind of getting turned on by him sucking the poison out of his hand, which I don't blame Shilian for having this moment, right? Still, like a ragged, be right? ragged beggar being served by a gorgeous consort, his posture was rigid, and even his legs were struggling to hold up his body. I like Shilian is so nervous. And Fu Yao was like, well, well, you acted carelessly. You caught the snake. Why are you causing unnecessary trouble? And then, oh my God, Sun Lung finally raised his head. The redness and swelling on the back of Shilian's hands had disappeared, but there was a gleam of blood around his lips, and his eyes were extremely cold. And then it's like Shilian finally turned to look back at his hand and heaved a sigh, and then he's like, well, thank you. Wh where's the poisonous blood? And he's like, don't swallow it. Mm-hmm. It's like... <laughs> Just that little, like, sexual connotation there with Shilian and Hua Chong is... It makes sense, like, just giving us little crumbs, little teasing crumbs of how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So then there's a section called um, Before Being Yeeted Into the Sinner's Pit. That's when they talk about um, about them building a shrine. And he's like, well, that's great news. Good news and bad news. We're going to be thrown down to a pit. So that, that part was added from there, which was really cool. I like that little added bit there. And then inside the sinner's pit, um, as Kamo was going Shilian climbed up involuntarily first hugged the other's neck tightly and immediately felt it was an appropriate oh what is this okay so San Long is carrying him okay and as they're fight as he's fighting Kamo Kamo pounced again the boy turned around lightly and skillfully and dodged to avoid it okay this part here Shilian's arm climbed up involuntarily first to hug the other's neck tightly and immediately thought it was inappropriate so he changed to grab at his clothes on his chest, but felt that was inappropriate. So he changed to grab his shoulders. And then when he went to grab them, it seemed he'd caught a thin braid. Oh! He felt as though he'd caught a female fox spirit's tail and let go thinking, why can't he be touched anywhere? Ooh, interesting, a female fox spirit's tail. He wanted to grab something, but these hands hugged him very firmly, sidestepping, moving around, and still holding him as steadily as ever. It was just that there seemed to be something cold on his wrist of both hands that poked him from time to time. The 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 braces. Yeah. I like the idea of, of talking about the female fox spirit's tail. Again, there's this conversation in this book of, you know, 
Shi Lian does not like to be thought of as feminine, right? Shi Lian, which is so interesting because we, we've had this discussion in the comments about Shi Lian being portrayed in fan art as slender or more feminine when there's like the buff Shi Lian agenda. And then Shi Lian does not want to be thought of as feminine. They like their masculinity. They don't, they seem to be kind of avoiding of being referred to in a more feminine tone, which is interesting, right? And then there's the idea that Shilin doesn't want his body altered in any way. So there's been a lot of talk in the comment section for this series about Hua Chong, who is very diva, very powerful, but very diva about possibly Hua Chong exuding the feminine energy. And maybe if they had like the childbearing pills that Hua Chong is the one that carries their child because they're totally fine changing their body all the time because they don't like how they originally look and Shi Lian likes how they originally look. So with the female foxtail spirit, I like the idea that Hua Chong might be the one that exudes the more feminine energy, but is super powerful. And Shi Lian is the one that doesn't, but is also super powerful. I like that. I, I like that we're, we're taking this concept of gender and just like making it fluid between Shi Lian and Hua Chong. Love it. Love it. And then Shilian thought he wasn't happy with others meddling. I like these, like, hey, hey. He's like, I don't want to get other people involved. There was a loud noise, and Shilian heard that it was the sound of a huge body crashing down. And it was like, why would the fight be over? But this boy was clearly holding him down with both hands. So how did he defeat his opponent? He's like, how did he defeat him when he was holding me in a bridal pose? How did that work? And then that's when Shilian says, you know, he says, what did you want to tell me and he's like why were you so disobedient I told you not to move but you jumped down directly and I couldn't even stop you and that's when Shilian he says is there any part of you that behaves like a human although you're very skilled you're the most frivolous ghost when it comes to disguises that I've ever seen and Sanlong said then you clearly know I'm very skilled why'd you jump down and he's like do you think I jumped down because I thought you were weak then why were you worried I'm worried because it's you what does it have to do with whether you're weak or strong? The young man had always been eloquent, yet he was struck speechless by him for a few consecutive sentences, which was rare. And then it tells him, he says there, he hugged him even tighter. He's like, can you, can you, can you put me down? And then Hua Chong's like, oh, okay, yep, I'm going to put you down. Of course I can. So yeah, he's like, he's like, how are you like this at a young age? He's like, to express my, I was wrong to express my sincerity, Gege, please. And that's when he like, they find out about the bodies and everything. I like this. So at this point, Hua Chong knows that Shilian knows that it's him. It just hasn't been spoken out loud that Shilian specifically knows that it's Hua Chong. But he knows that at this point, Shilian reveals in the pit, he knows Hua Chong is a ghost. He just hasn't specifically said that he's Hua Chong, but he knows he's not human. So I like that it like just gives those little crumbs to build up to the moment where he's going to say Hua Chong's name, which is going to be in the next episode, and reveal all that. Yes! Yay! That's so exciting. I love it. I love it because it's like when we watched the Dong Hua, we were joking in the comments. We're like, how does Shi Lian not know that it's Hua Chong? He has to know. There's no way he couldn't. And I like that MXTX gives us a little bit of confirmation that, yeah, it is. It is him. Okay. And then they talk about uh, the scenery being not bad. And I like that Shi Lian's like, you know, you said that the ground is dirty. So how can the scenery be good? And Hua Chong's like, because that's you in it, Gege. I love that little innuendo joke too. That was really, really good. Nice. And he's like, you're a heavenly official, but why? You possess no spiritual energy in your face, radiates an aura of misfortune. So this part with Banyu talking about the menacing creature in San Long and everything is all added. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nice. Again, giving us a little bit of a hint with Shi Lian that he has no spiritual aura. His body's immortal. But, and then the little talk about Hua Chong being the menace. Mm-hmm. I love it. He obviously is. Oh, I love this line here. The Goshi, it says, the smile on the young man's lips became shallower. Shi Lian looked at him and said, are you referring to San Long? He is not a menacing creature. Oh, I like that line because San Long gets a little bit like upset that the ghost she calls him a creature like he's ugly because again Hua Chong has horrible self-esteem and doesn't think he looks good at all so when she calls him ugly he's just like and Shilian goes oh well 
Are you referring to Son Long? He's not a menacing creature. And this line, the Goshi hesitated for a moment, perhaps feeling Shilian had been deceived and reminded him in a low voice, but he obviously is. Shilian said warmly, it doesn't matter regardless of what he is, he's still my friend. She's like, well, that's right. You're quite nice. Thank you. Oh, I love that. I love that she's like, um, no, he is a monster. And Shelian's like, but he's still my friend, so be nice. And it's like, ah, oh! it's why Shelian and Huachang are a match made in heaven. It's why they're perfect for each other, right? Mm hmm So then, yeah. So then Fu Yao decides that he's going to come down there. I forgot Fu Yao came down. I forgot that was a thing. I don't recall. Um, yeah. I remember... Yep, I remember Shi Lian hearing Fu Yao up above the pit, but I don't remember Fu Yao coming down there. So that's going to be interesting if we get some added stuff with Fu Yao there, because I don't recall that, but interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I the little added stuff here, I think it all helps. It makes it much better in my opinion. I really enjoy it. Um, I'm super excited to see how the story keeps changing and when episode eight comes out eight's my lucky number so if it comes out in may that's my birthday month so that would be really cool not trying to rush you treasure chest i'm just saying that'd be pretty fun just saying that'd be a fun time i don't know so um in any case though i'm super excited y'all i hope you all are too but we'll just see right so in any case i hope you all have a wonderful week Please stay safe. Take care. Thank you for watching episodes six and seven of the audio drama with me. I'm going to be excited for episode eight when we get to it. But in the meantime, uh, stay safe. And I'll be back again soon with more Heaven Officials Blessings audio drama. Bye.